This is a summary of the river basin management topic in higher geography. Please be aware that this is an optional global issue, so you may have studied a different topic. I'm going to run through the whole topic, but you may need to add in detail from your textbook or your course notes. There are four things you need to be able to do in this topic. First of all, you should have an understanding of the physical characteristics of a river basin you have studied in either North America, Africa or Asia. You should be able to explain the need for water management given physical and human characteristics of a river basin in general. Dams and reservoirs have certain site requirements and you should be able to discuss what these are covering both physical and human factors. You will have studied a water control project on your case study river and you should be able to explain the social, economic and environmental consequences of this project. That's for both positive and negative impacts. For the river basin that you have studied, you will need to understand the broad physical characteristics. Some of these are listed on the slide here. You'll need to know about the source of the river. This is usually found in mountainous areas where they create a watershed. You should also know about the tributaries that flow into your river. Climatic information, particularly variation in temperature and precipitation between different parts of the basin and variation through the year are very relevant. For instance, if you are discussing the River Nile, you should be aware that it has two main tributaries flowing north towards the Mediterranean Sea and the fertile Nile Delta. Rainfall varies a lot over the drainage basin, with mountains in the upper course and desert in the lower course to the north. In addition, the rainfall is seasonal in the south due to the movement of the ITCZ, creating times of flood and times with significantly less water. This type of background to your case study river will help your understanding of the need for water management and ultimately why your case study dam and reservoir should or should not have been built. A very common question in river basin management is to be asked why is there a need for water management on a certain river? The question will come with a wide range of information usually including population data and statistics of some kind, as well as a map and climate graphs. You will get credit for reading values from any graphs, but to answer the question, you need to relate this information to the purpose of building a dam or reservoir. Keep in mind that large dams have multiple uses to try and get the best value for money. You should try and mention all of the different uses in your answer. For example, Climate data like this gives an indication of whether there are times of the year or specific locations that might be at risk from droughts or floods. In this example, rainfall is highest in August with 250 millimetres, leading to a higher discharge of 6,000 cumex. By building a dam, some of this water could be held back to reduce the risk of flooding to cities like Khartoum. You can expand on this point further by talking about the impact on house prices and insurance premiums. In December and January there is no rainfall and the discharge level drops down to about 100 cumex. Water could then be released from the reservoir at these times to reduce the risk of drought and water shortage. As soon as you have information about an increasing population or even a large city, you can detail all of the different needs that people have for water. This would include domestic water supply, including cooking, drinking, washing and sanitation, but also irrigation of crops and electricity generation. In this example, you would want to link the rising population in Ethiopia predicted to reach 200 million by 2050 to all of these needs. Additionally, the statistics about access to improved drinking water and electricity should be referenced to emphasise the need. One advantage of electricity generated through hydroelectric power 
is that this is a renewable source and may reduce reliance on burning fossil fuels and the associated contribution to our changing climate. But be careful not to start just listing benefits. Remember, this question is about need. The statistic about 73% of the population being employed in agriculture demonstrates the importance of reliable irrigation on a large number of people, but also implies that Ethiopia may be working to reduce this reliance by investing in manufacturing industry, again highly dependent on a reliable water source. Whatever statistics you are given in this question, you need to link them to the possible uses for a large dam and reservoir, and go into detail to pick up more marks. If asked to explain the factors that you need to consider when selecting the site of a dam, read the question carefully. Is it asking for physical factors, or human factors, or both? Is it about your specific case study, or is it about dams and reservoirs in general? As always, it won't be enough to list factors. You will need to add relevant detail to explain why these factors are important. Physical factors include geology. Impermeable rocks would be better, avoiding the need for expensive sealing of the reservoir base and reducing loss of reservoir water but the rocks also need to be very strong to take the weight of the dam and reservoir. Tectonically stable areas are preferred to avoid the risk from earthquakes and faulting. The best valley shape would be narrow and deep. The valley sides adding strength to the dam and the drop in height from the top of the dam giving more potential energy for electricity production. A smaller surface area in relation to the volume of water also reduces water loss through evaporation. Sites with a lot of water are better, but dams cost a huge amount to build and variation in flow makes it easier to justify the cost. The variation might be due to seasonal rainfall patterns or from snowmelt in the spring, depending on the location. When explaining human factors, Considering the population and land use in the local area is important. This might be about what will be flooded by the reservoir. Is it housing requiring people to be displaced? Is it valuable farmland reducing the ability to grow crops? Is it ancient or historical sites therefore having a cultural impact? It might also be about distance to the end users of the water or electricity. If it is a large distance, then this will increase costs and risk losing more water through evaporation. Access is very important during construction for both materials and a workforce. This might be about existing infrastructure or the proximity of a population to draw on. It is worth considering the impact on neighbouring states or countries. If the reservoir would flood land the other side of a border, this can have implications for whether a project can go ahead. Equally, changing the flow downstream into other states or countries can do the same. Usually, this is asked about dams in general, but if asked about your case study, make sure you have named examples and specific features you can include. One of the most common exam questions is to be asked about the consequences of a water control project you have studied. Again, it's really important to read the question carefully. You might be asked about benefits or problems, sometimes called adverse consequences, and the question can specifically focus on social, economic, environmental, or perhaps political consequences. Your answer should include named examples or statistics whenever possible and each consequence should be expanded fully to ensure you achieve the mark. Avoid repetition of points even though each consequence might fit into any of the categories depending on how you word it. I will give you some examples of the kinds of things you could write to pick up a mark, but this question can ask for up to 12 marks, so you need to be able to cover several other points in the same detail. 
My examples will come from the High Aswan Dam on the River Nile, but you may have covered a different water control project. Hopefully this will give you an idea about how much to write. A positive social impact is that the dam allowed Egypt to provide electricity to 20,000 rural villages, improving quality of life and access to education. A positive economic impact would be that it allowed Egypt to export electricity to neighbouring countries like Sudan and Ethiopia. A positive environmental impact might be that Lake Nasser, the 300 kilometre long reservoir produced by the building of the High Aswan Dam, provides a habitat particularly important to migrating birds like yellow-billed storks. One negative social impact was the requirement to relocate 24 different Egyptian temples, including the complex at Abu Simbel, often moving them brick by brick and losing the ancient sites they were located in. One negative economic impact was the $1.2 billion it took to build the dam, putting Egypt into debt. One negative environmental impact is that the dam now traps silt behind it. In the past, this silt would have fertilised the river valley and its delta, so there's now a need for farmers to use artificial fertilisers. Now that final point can be adapted to whatever the question asks for. It creates a social impact. That's where health issues are caused by a lack of PPE for farmers. An economic impact. That's where the cost of the fertilisers has an impact on the farmer's profit. Or an environmental impact, where the increased chemical fertilisers can affect the biodiversity of the River Nile. Remember, you could have studied a different river basin, but you do need to go into just as much detail. Here is a selection of what has been asked in the past for river basin management. Notice that a consequences question seems to come up every year, coupled with either a site question or a question about the need for water management.